Let's take a look at section 6.1, set theory definitions and the element method of proof. Now, we talked about sets in chapter one, uh, and you might find it worthwhile to go back and review some of the basics there in terms of notation and definitions. Now that we've done proofs, um, you're gonna see uh, some different types of problems in this section uh, dealing with proofs. Uh, not Certainly not all the, the problems in here involve proofs, but some of them do. And they involve what's called the element method of proof, where you're trying to show that one set is a subset of another set. And so what that involves is actually pretty straightforward. You've got sets A and B. You want to show that A is a subset of B. And remember, that means that every element of A is an element of B. So how do you prove that? Well, you take an arbitrary and but particular element of A, and you show that it must be an element of B. And that's all there is to it. Um, so what you're doing as you go through that, and you'll see an example in a separate video, um, you need to use whatever definitions you're given for the set A and B to show that. You know, so in other words, the whatever um, conditions an element must meet to be part of A, and whatever conditions an element must be to be part of B, that's going to be at the heart of this kind of proof. Uh, we say that two sets are equal if each of them is a subset of the other. Okay, so if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, we say the two sets are equal, and we simply use an equal sign um, to denote that. Um, so if you're asked to prove two sets are equal, you're really doing this in both directions. You're showing that A is a subset of B, and you're showing that B is a subset of A. Now, sometimes that can be done with a chain of if and only if, you know, um, steps. So you don't really have to do twice as much work. Um, sometimes it may be easier, though, to break it up into two halves and, and do, you know, one half to show that A is a subset of B and the other half to show that B is a subset of A. Kind of depends on the example. Now, another part of section 6.1 is discussion of set operations. Okay, so if we talk about U as the universal set, so whatever we happen to be talking about, the universal set is the set of all elements under discussion, whether it be real numbers or the integers or something else, you know, all the letters of the alphabet, whatever happens to be the, the sort of context of working in. The union of two sets is the set consisting of all the elements that are in at least one of those two sets. So you're kind of taking those two sets and combining it into one big set. The intersection is different. You're only looking for where those two sets overlap. So it's the set of elements that are in both A and B, okay? the, the elements they have in common, in other words. Notice here in the definition, in the um, set builder notation, the role of those words and and or. So to say something's in the union means it's in A or B. To say it's in the intersection means it's in A and B. We've got a couple other operations. The difference, B minus A, is a set of all elements that are in B but not in A. The complement of a set is all the elements that are outside of that set. So if you uh, consider the integers as the universal set, then the complement of the even integers would be the odd integers. Okay, we did talk about this briefly. It doesn't appear in the book in section 1.2 when we were doing sets, but it does appear in the, the uh, 
solution. So it is something that I mentioned back then. Uh, the empty set is, is simply the set that has no elements. And so two sets are called disjoint if their intersection is the empty set. Okay, so another way to think about disjoint is just non-overlapping. They have no elements in common. Now, if you have a whole bunch of sets and you want to say that none of them overlap, the term we use for that is mutually disjoint. Okay, so you've got a whole bunch of sets that have no overlap whatsoever. Um, we'd say they're mutually disjoint. And that concept is important for this next definition, which is a partition of a set. So to say that we have a partition of A means we have a number of subsets which are mutually disjoint, okay, they don't overlap, uh, and their union is A. So put together, they cover all of A, but they don't overlap. So one example that I think um, is helpful for this, if you're familiar with you know, um, traditionally in American high schools, we have freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors. So you can think of that as a partition of the set of students. Okay, so those are four sets that don't overlap, but put together, they make up the entire student population of a high school. Um, another example kind of along similar lines is if you think of a dormitory, and let's say there are three floors, you can think of a partition of the residents of that dormitory as the students who live on the first floor, the students who live on the second floor, and the students who live on the third floor. Okay, They're, those are mutually disjoint sets and their union is the set of all residents of that dormitory. So that's the concept of a partition. Um, one other concept that's introduced in this section is the power set of a set. Um, and the power set is the set of all subsets of that set. Okay. So an example, uh, the power set of the set containing the elements 1 and 2 would have four elements in it. Okay, It would have the empty set. The empty set is always part of that power set because... The empty set is a subset of every set. Um, we'd have the set containing one, we'd have the set containing two, and we'd have the original set, the set containing one and two. Okay, so that would be the four subsets that are the elements of the power set of the set containing one and two. Um, that completes this video. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, the next video, uh, section 6.2, is about properties of sets. See you in the next video.